my story sits at the core of who I am. And every time I try to like dissuade that or shift that in any way, like it just doesn't work. So for those of you who are new to me, let me just introduce myself. 14 years ago, I was a single mom. I found myself in this place where I was either just pissed off all day long, or angry, or I felt so alone, I just didn't know what to do. I, I can't even begin to tell you how many nights I went to bed crying. Not because of my situation, but because the truth of the matter was that I wanted to give up. I actually wanted to stop living. I was done with living. I couldn't figure out how to continue this cycle that for me at that time felt endless. My girls are 18 months apart, and I'm obsessed with them. But as much as I love them, the truth is that I really could not figure out how to make life work. The moment that I decided, like the moment that I sat inside of making a decision to stop thinking small, my whole world changed. I didn't all of a sudden get a degree. I didn't all of a sudden get licensed. I didn't get any certifications. I didn't stumble upon the right person. I didn't, I wasn't lucky. I truthfully found myself in a place where I was like, you know what? Damn it, I will no longer allow myself to think small. I won't allow myself to think small about who I am. I won't allow myself to feel inferior in front of other people because of what I'm not. I won't allow myself to feel any old way because of what color I was, or the fact that I was a woman, or the fact that I really didn't know where dad was. I refuse to allow myself to think small. And once I made that decision, I went from being this broke, angry, just unbelievably pissed off single mom to building three multiple six-figure businesses and then I wanted to build a multiple seven-figure business. And I shared that with you, not because of the fact that I built a multiple seven-figure business, but here's the hiccup. So I had gotten to six figures and, and truth be told, we were no longer hungry Life wasn't horrible, but I will tell you this for sure. I found myself constantly showing up as two different people. I constantly found myself like in front of these people and I was like playing a game of like who I was or wasn't. I didn't want people to know that I, I didn't have all my shit together. I didn't want people to know that I wasn't perfect at home. I didn't want people to know that we hadn't been sleeping on couches. I didn't want people to know that I had put my kids to bed hungry just years before. I didn't want people to know that I had still had no clue where dad was. I didn't want people to know. And even when I started hiring people and building networks, I realized that I was still living, not necessarily a sham, but I was only living at like 50% of myself. Because I constantly fought this battle of being the professional version of Tiffany, the home version of Tiffany, the mom version of Tiffany. Has anyone else ever felt like that? So it's like I found myself in this crazy in the cycle of constantly trying to accommodate all these different roles that I was like, this is not working. Once I made a decision to own my story, and, and, I, and I really want you to sit inside of this word when I say own my story, like once I made a decision to not just own my story, but I really and truly mean like own every part of my story. And when I say every part of my story, I mean the good, the bad and the ugly. Because it's really easy to own your story and then you own parts of it. You own the parts that people want to hear or the parts that you want to share. You own the parts that are like, they're prettier. You know what I mean? They're not as bad. They're not as dramatic. They're not as trauma filled. Once I made a decision to own all parts of my story, man, my whole world changed. I went from six figures to multiple seven figures in a year. And it wasn't a matter of me saying to myself, you know what, I am just, I am going to change who I am or shift what I'm doing. I really and truly, honest to God, I just stopped apologizing for who I was. I decided that Tiffany Water was enough. And not only was she enough, that she was enough as she was. Not the futuristic Tiffany. Not the one that was gonna be thinner, Hell, it was definitely not the one to be thinner. Because everyone knows my philosophy. I believe fat keeps me warm. So I'm like, no, don't give me anything fat free. I don't want it. But the truth is that for me, this concept of owning parts of myself, owning parts of who I was, 
owning some of the things that didn't seem so politically correct, that's what made me okay. That's what made me good enough. 